Hi guys! Today I'm doing my December 2016, January 2017 and February 2017 wrap ups. I'm doing it all in one because I just kept putting off doing them each month and I just wanted to get it out of the way. So the first book I finished reading in December was actually a picture book called Odd Dog Out and I read this because I picked it up to give my sister for Christmas and when I got home I couldn't wait, I had to read it. Now my sister is only three and three quarter years younger than me. Um, she's not a little kid. The reason why I got her this picture book is because it is about a sausage dog who doesn't fit in with all the other sausage dogs. And it's very very cute and that's why I got it for her because she is obsessed with them. Then after Christmas I finally got around to reading Poison by Sarah Pinbra. This is in a um, trilogy. This is the first one, I think. I'm not sure if they're interlinked at all. This seemed pretty standalone to me, although there were a couple of things that um, kind of were hinted at that I think could be developed. Um, I borrowed this off my friend Claire Rousseau, so I'm sure she'll be very happy to see that I have read it now and she can have it back <laughs> to go with the other two. <laughs> although I do want to read the other two, I didn't actually enjoy this one so much. Um, I thought it was quite plain and unlyrical considering it was a fairy tale retelling. I really liked the direction the story went in, I thought it was really good and interesting and dark, but I just didn't really get much atmosphere from it, so um, yeah, I didn't love it really, but I am really intrigued to see what the other two retellings of this trilogy are like, so I will be checking those out for sure. After Christmas I went to my aunt and uncle's house and um, it's a bit of a long car journey so I thought I'd put an audiobook on my phone and listen to it and I chose The Uncommon Reader by Alan Bennett which is a book I have been meaning to read for a while. It's um, basically it's an imagining of what would happen if the Queen discovered a mobile library in the grounds of Buckingham Palace and started borrowing books from there. Um, it's really short, it's a novella really and um, it's kind of silly but it's really fun and thoughtful and I really enjoyed it. It got me through that journey and um, I continued to listen to it whilst doing various things with my hands, you know, getting ready and um, taking off my makeup and all that kind of thing for the next few days and I really enjoyed it and would recommend. Then I read the first deluxe edition of Fables. Um, this is a comic book series. My boyfriend got me for this um, when did he get me this? I don't even know. Um, a couple of years ago now, I think, and I didn't get around to reading it until um, last December. This is also a fairy tale kind of retelling set in the modern day. It's a bit like the TV show Once Upon a Time, except not as fun. Um, <laughs> it's generally a lot more serious and darker than Once Upon a Time, um, but I did really enjoy it. I don't think I enjoyed it enough to purchase the rest of the series in um, these hardback editions, although they are very nice. I think I will just read the rest of the stories on my boyfriend's iPad because I think he does have the rest on there. So now we're into 2017 and the first book I finished reading was I'll Be Home for Christmas, this anthology of Christmas stories. I really, really enjoyed this. I think this is massively underrated. I haven't seen very much buzz about it. And that's kind of disappointing. I hope that this December a lot more people pick it up and give it a go because I think there are some really important stories in here and some really lovely heartwarming ones as well. It's a really great anthology. I did talk a little bit about a couple of the stories in a blog post which I will link down below. Um, I talk about my favourite stories there um, but honestly most of the stories in this collection are pretty memorable and great so I would strongly recommend if you've been watching my videos since I first started over on Bookish Brits, you'll remember my list of shame. And this is a book which was on all of my lists of shame. These were lists I would do at the start of every year of books that I should have read by then but hadn't. But I have finally done it. I have finally read Attack of the Theatre People by Marco Sito. And after all that time, I really, really hoped I would love it. I did really like it, but I didn't enjoy it as much as uh, How I Paid for College, which is the first is a um, duo of books. And I loved 
how I paid for college so much. It even held up pretty well to reread, which I did last year. But Attack of the Theatre People just didn't have the same feel to it. I really liked the optimism of how I paid for college. And yeah, I guess Attack of the Theatre People is quite realistic and it really follows the character's difficulties that he has now he's finished high school and he's at college and I really liked seeing all those characters again but what I think I really liked the most about how I paid for college was the sort of unbridled passion and optimism and how the character the main character wasn't afraid of being himself and in this book he is afraid of being himself and yeah I just I just didn't like the feel so much. So although it's good, and I think it is worth reading if you enjoyed How I Paid for College, um, don't expect it to be exactly more of the same, because it's not. Next up, I read A Necklace of Raindrops by Joan Aiken, which is um, a collection that I'm not sure if I read when I was a kid. So I really, really vividly remembered the title story, A Necklace of Raindrops. Throughout my entire life, I remember this story and I really, really wanted to find it and read it. And a couple of years ago, I found out who it was by and it was in this collection. And so I made a mental note to pick it up if I ever saw it. And I found this kind of quite battered copy, which I will not be passing on to anybody else because all the pages are loose. Um, I will probably, I really like the illustrations. They're really gorgeous. Let me show them, show you some. Uh, so I'm kind of, oh, that's the cover again. You don't see that one. There we go. They're really pretty. I would really like to frame these, take them out of the book and frame them at some point in the future. Um, so yeah, I picked this up because I wanted to reread the title story. And actually, although I liked the title story and it kind of filled in some of the gaps in my memory, it wasn't my favourite story in the collection. The second story in the collection, The Cat Sat on the Mat, is actually my favourite. But all these stories are really cute, funny, magical stories for children, um, quite young children I think. The text is quite big, but even as an adult I really found it quite a fun read and like I say I love the illustrations and will be framing those out of this copy someday in the future. <laughs> I've always been a really big fan of the film The Princess Diaries, haven't seen the sequel, have not heard good things. Um, and a couple of years ago I read the first book in the series for the first time and I do have the second, the third and the fourth in paperback. However, I hadn't got around to reading them. So when I was wanting an audiobook to listen to, I was just really craving something to listen to in the morning whilst getting ready for work and whilst doing chores like cleaning and cooking and tidying and laundry, all that fun stuff. Um, I went on my library website and I found that they have most of the series in audiobook. And since then, in February and March, I've listened to the second book, the third book, the fourth book, and Project Princess, which is a novella that happens in between books four and five. So it's listed on Goodreads as Princess Diaries 4.5. And I am really enjoying these series. My opinions about each book vary greatly. There's some of them where I've just been like, that's brilliant, that's so funny. Others, I'm just like, Mia's being a bit whiny. Um, but overall, I'm really enjoying this series. I am actually right now on book seven. And this is the last one my library has to download. I don't know what I'm going to do next. Because I know I could just get my hands on the print copies really easily. But the audiobooks aren't even on Audible. And because I've been listening to the audiobooks for so long, I kind of want to carry on listening to them. Um, so I need to track them down somehow. Maybe I'll get them on CD or something. Um, I know some of the libraries near me have them on CD, uh, but it's a bit of a pain and it's a bit expensive to get them that way. Um, I might have to see if there's anywhere else I could download them from. Finally, the last book I finished reading in February is the book 168 Hours, You Have More Time Than You Think by Laura Vanderkam. I spent like 20 minutes before starting to film this video looking for this book and I don't know where it's gone. Um, <laughs> seriously. Um, I need to spend more of my 168 hours tidying my flat, apparently. Um, but yes, this is a book about time management um, with a 
difference. It's very analytical. It's not like a lot of self-help books where they just kind of give you a lot of self-esteem boosting platitudes and stuff. This is actually really meaty and gritty and gets you thinking really critically about how you use your time. It's absolutely fantastic. I think it is the best personal development book that I have ever read. Um, if you've read quite a few personal development books, you'll kind of find that they repeat themselves. There is none of that in 168 hours. It is so useful. I enjoyed it so much. I think it's going to be one of those books that I reread a lot in the future. And each time I read it, I think I'm going to get more out of it. Um, but yeah, I would recommend this to anybody who wants to kind of, who wants to really do more with their life and be more deliberate about how they use their time. Someone who um, has a lot of ambitions and hobbies and interests and passions as well as their work and the studies and everything else. I think it's a book that could really benefit people. What I really liked about it is because the author has a background in journalism, she interviewed a lot of people and looked at their um, habits and how they use their time. So it's kind of backed up with um, anecdotes and explanations of what other people do and it's very very practical I really like that it does assume a certain amount of financial privilege you know if you're in a really difficult situation where you don't have much money and you don't have um, a lot of spare time because you've got caring responsibilities or whatever then it will be difficult to follow a lot of the suggestions in this book I just wanted to put that note in there because I think that some people read this and feel like you know, this is impossible for me, what earth can I do? I think you have to be realistic about what you can do within the strictures of your own life. Um, but otherwise it is really great and I would recommend it. So that's it, that's all the books I read in December, January and February. This piece of hair just keeps getting in my face. If you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up, if you'd like to see more from me hit the subscribe button, otherwise you'll see me again soon. Bye!